for that nice introduction. Um, before I start talking about this film that took me across uh, 14 countries and five continents in six years of my time, I need some help from you because I want to make sure that we're on the same page of the hymnal, so to speak. That and, and, that, and I just want to know if you could raise your hand, maybe like you're conducting something, if you know the Ninth Symphony of Beethoven. So we've got quite a few people in here who know it and a lot who don't. So the, what I'm going to do is do something brief uh, and, and describe the symphony. All of you have probably heard the tune, and if th those of you who know it, maybe you could sing it along with me or hum it along with me. The tune goes to the Ode to Joy, which is in the final movement of a four-movement symphony that takes us through a, through a landscape of emotions that's, that's quite profound and quite interesting and, 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 and uh, full of variety, serenity, and melancholy, and terror. The tune at the end of, in the Ode to Joy, the fourth movement, goes like this, and you've heard it. Da 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 Da, da, da. Very, very good. Thank you so much. It was in Die Hard 3, and that's where I, I'm sure all of you <laughs> learned it. But this symphony was uh, 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 performed and, and composed in 1824 by Beethoven near the end of his life. And he's, he's sick, and, he's, and I, I believe he's looking back at an earlier part of his life with, with his, uh, when he was uh, much more idealistic or revisiting that part of his past. He was 19 when the French Revolution broke out and the ideas of equality, liberty, fraternity were in the air and, and people felt like it was possible to achieve enormous things, enormous change. I think Wordsworth summed it up, summed up the, summed up the enthusiasm of the, of the era by saying, Bliss it was in that time to be alive, but to be young was very heaven. And I think Beethoven felt that. It's a, a chance to remake the world in a better way, a chance to make a decent world. Because what he put at the center of that Ode to Joy, that he, a poem that he borrowed from Friedrich Schiller, he put the words, Elementen werden Bruder, all men will be brothers. And a second line, that said, this is a kiss for all the world. So this is, there's this utopian impulse that I think we all share, we all have it one time or another, despite, despite evidence to the contrary that yes, in fact, we can uh, be uh, better connected with people, be more decent people, create a world that's better than it is, despite what we see around us. Uh, all the time. So this is Beethoven's, this is Beethoven's battle cry for humanity, as one person put it in the film. So I traveled to uh, places where I found this symphony being used in extreme moments of crisis. In Chile, under the Pinochet dictatorship, where women sang it over at torture prisons, and men heard it inside. In uh, South Africa, in, in Japan, where it's a, a very interesting phenomenon where, where it's performed hundreds of times with sometimes with 10,000 people in the chorus. And in Germany, of course, when the Berlin Wall fell in 89, the, the, the Ninth Symphony was there to, to elevate that moment of, of freedom when East and West Berlin were joined. But what I want to concentrate on today is just the, the story of China and my own conversion to Beethoven because I thought about calling this, this talk uh, How to Find Your Inner F Fool and um, Become Who You Are. It's a very uh, interesting, strange statement, but that's what I felt was ha what happened when I 
filmed with this gentleman in China. But my own conversion came kind of late in the day, and I'm going to use this as a prop as my car because I came to classical music by accident when I was in my 20s. I was in a borrowed car, and I was driving up the coast of uh, Calif California from, from, from Long Los Angeles to Santa Barbara. Uh, I was in my 20s. My 20s were a, a terrible decade. I was filled with angst and, and, and existential dread and all kinds of other spiritual uh, and emotional maladies. And I, I was in this borrowed car, and there was a cassette in it, and that, yes, it was that far back. There were, there was a cassette in it, and I pushed that cassette in. Beautiful, again, beautiful sunset in winter in California along the coast. You would think I was, I was content, but I was not. But I pushed that, I pushed that cassette in, and here's what I heard. I hope. Now, to me, that was overwhelming. It, it, it touched me. This is the third, this is the third movement, the adagio, the slow movement of the Ninth Symphony. After this comes the fireworks of the finale. But I felt like that, had that touched me in such a deep way, in a profound way, in, in the same way that my rock and roll had, that I had grown up with, the Beatles, the, with Dylan. And I had, to, uh, I had to find out more and listen more. And, as I listened further into the fourth movement, this is what I heard. <laughs> harmony, making consensus, talking with others is important in the Japanese culture. Japanese love doing things together. I got to that point, as I was driving, I'd become dangerous. I, I, I was shouting, I was swerving, I, I was fist bumping the non-existent person next to me in the uh, passenger seat. My angst was going out the window, my existential dread was going out the other window. I felt like I could have left the planet at that moment. Yes, here comes the telephone pole, but I'm good. So I, I turned into a fanatic. I turned into a fanatic, and I, and I, I had to do two things. I had to, to read more about this man and this symphony, and I had to listen, listen, listen. I almost felt like I should be walking around to people's houses randomly and knocking on the doors and saying, do you have Beethoven in your life? <laughs> it, 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 got, it got to be that bad. So I, I became a fool for Beethoven. I became a fool for Beethoven. and. Uh, uh, the melancholy and angst, of course, they, they, they came back, but this was, this was part of a process, a long process. I, didn't, I, didn't, I had to go find these stories. I had to then eventually, I didn't know I was going to do it at the time, I had to eventually make a movie about this grand symphony, this beautiful, beautiful, um, uplifting piece for humankind. I, I, I can only concentrate on one story in this um, talk be because it's, it's not enough time, but one person in this film fascinated me because he 
was a man probably as uh, old as many of you in the audience who are students. He was in China, in Beijing, studying at the university. He, in 1989, in, this, in the spring of 1989, when the protests started against the, against the government, and he wanted to go to the UK or he wanted to go to the United States to, to leave China. He was studying for exams. He was learning English. He was, he was getting prepared to go on a track that he was convinced he was on. He was going to go to, a, to another country. He was going to get a good job. He was going to make great money. And what happens? He's sitting in his dorm room one day and his computer breaks down. This is life, folks. I mean, contingency and chance. We think we're going to do something, but some little thing happens, and all of a sudden, we're on a different road. His computer breaks down. He goes down to the square. Had, he, had his computer not broken down, he would have been sitting there studying and probably gone off to uh, uh, Europe or the, or the United States. When his computer broke down, he goes to the square, and he becomes who he is. And I want to play a little bit of, of, of let you meet him and, uh, and then explain what that means. He became who he is. It took me three days to think if I should join this movement. It was hard for me to, but I just feel that all around we feel our own energy, I think, and a collective joint force. We have a new whole of this whole country, and but in front of us there was a big obstacle. The armies, the troops, they were coming. Now, now Feng goes to the square and he uh, sets up the, the, the sound system. And, he, and every time that the government starts to broadcast speeches to the students to tell them to go back to the, to the dorms or back to their schools, or he puts in Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. He puts in Beethoven's Ninth Symphony to cover the, 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 the rhetoric and to cover the propaganda of the, of the government. He in a, in, in, in a, essentially becomes who he is. With, with, in solidarity with these thousands and tens of thousands of people, eventually millions of people across China, he understands that, that his life is going to be different. His life is going to look for fulfillment. His life is going to be much deeper than he thought it was going to be. And he's going to rem remain an activist for the rest of his days. He leaves China. He comes to the United States. He's still, he's still an activist today in a human rights organization. He becomes who he was supposed to be. He's, he understands finally what he was put here to do, and he's still doing it. The last person I have to say, the, 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 the big fool, is, is of course the man himself, Ludwig uh, van Beethoven. Um, not foolish in the ways that we think of it, but, but wise, uh, the wise fool who knows more than m many people around him. He wanted love and never found it. He wanted a family and never had one. He was cursed with a cosmic joke of losing his hearing. The, the greatest manipulator of sound loses his hearing. He's writing a symphony, his final symphony. He knows that when it's performed, he will not be able to hear a note of it. Considering that he's looked into the abyss, that he know, he's looked at his mortality, he will only live three more years, he could have taken his past and his frustrations and his fears and resentments and turned this final movement of the Ninth Symphony into a, an ode to sorrow, an ode to suffering, an, an 
an ode to misery. But what does he do? He turns it into an ode to joy, an affirmation of life, a saying yes to life no matter what, and gives us this kiss for all the world. <laughs> So moral of the story, uh, maybe try to find your inner fool, become who you are, and yet recognize that it takes forever as long as we're, as long as we're here to take that journey. Thanks so much for having me.